Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello, everybody. Ruben Bressler. Hey, ditto. <laughs> hey, ditto. Yeah. Some exciting Pokemon <laughs> chat in the pre-show. Oh, of I was which... just saying, I was saying ditto to what Aaron said. I don't right. know what you're talking about. Of course, of course. Well, we kick it off with our first pick in the giveaway. Get your chance at a $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com by typing exclamation mark raffle in the chat, but subscribe first to get two chances to win. And don't forget our raid at the end of the show to support a member of the community. Enter your suggestions at the end of the show to see who we might raid tonight. That's right. Let me know, because uh, I can't keep an eye on all the things. If there's somebody that you think we should raid towards the end of our program, do let us know in the chat. Faux show. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> you know, it's not every week we get to start off with something incredibly positive, feel good, Give, gives you the warm and fuzzies, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick Sullivan was going to help raise some money for a friend of his who had gotten sick. Who wants to kind of take this one? Aaron, you want to apologize? Yeah, so, uh, so Devoted Druid on Twitter is Liz. Uh, Liz has been in the MTG finance game for a while. You might have seen her vending at various events. Um, she's worked for a couple different dealers or stores. And uh, Liz apparently was diagnosed with cancer recently. And obviously, healthcare being the way it is in this country, uh, cancer treatments are very expensive. And, you know, especially if you're, if you're just, you know, kind of doing magic or doing magic finance for a living, you're probably not making that much money. Um, yeah. And you probably don't have health insurance and either and so it's very expensive and so um, people started uh, coming up with ways to raise money for her and one of the ways that um, Patrick Sullivan decided to contribute was that he put up for sale uh, or for auction uh, his famous lightning bolts that he used in that feature match with Ross Merriam Mm -hmm. um, that we all talk about all the time and I think he raised over $11,000 for Liz's care um, and uh, that was amazing and he made a video about it and just to see something just to see such an outpouring from these people was really nice and, um, you know, to be able to own a part of history, you know, we, we all remember that feature yeah. match, you know, and Patrick doing what Patrick loves to do. And it was really lovely. $11,525 yeah, were... raised. Yeah. Uh, That's great. Which is excellent. Amazing. Yeah, these were beta bolts signed by Christopher Rush that had seen lots and lots of tournament play from P. Sullivan himself. Oh, yeah, and it was a raffle. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it was yeah, a raffle, yeah, one buck a uh, slot, and you could buy as many as you want. That's a lot of people. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was fantastic. Pretty incredible. And and what a, I mean, it's, it's it, the card themselves, or the cards themselves, the four cards, <clears> being P. Sully's personal bolts. Right. Have that sort of gravitas. Add to that that they're just beta bolts. Like you're the you're baseline you're already... beta bolts signed by Chris Rush, played by P. Sully. I mean, those could be in a museum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, um, well she done. had responded. Yeah, uh, Liz had responded on Twitter. I'm literally shaking. So many people have reached out and con- contributed money and wish me well. This community is my everything. When I'm better, I will do everything I can to pay it forward, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, obviously, those who would be in the finance world, the the binder grinders, if you were. And even there's people who, like, literally their job was flying from Japan uh-huh. to around the world to buy and sell Japan, you know, Japanese yep. cards. Like, that's a thing and that was happening. Cards and then uh-huh. sell them in Japan and then Absolutely. sell Japanese cards. Yeah. And there's something about Japanese, they, they love English cards, but only when they're like crazy mint. Like yeah. they, they got to be super shiny mint. But right. anyway, there was, that was somebody's, you know, there were multiple yeah. people who did that for a living and yeah. you can't do that anymore. There's no <clears> events <throat> to go to. You can't buy and sell. There's no events. Yeah. Like it's, it's a problem for stores and online vendors like cool stuff. But I mean, yeah. just imagine for those who had to live by those vendor slots at those events. Those well, even gone. your teams, you know, I remember the cool stuff guys being pretty ubiquitous at, at oh, events. Yeah. I would always see Victor. Hey, Victor, if you're watching, I see you. <laughs> Um, you're still so, there, yeah. Yeah, and so I used to, you know, I recognize those guys, and I, I would look for you at every GP, and yeah, just, just that's just not a thing anymore. Like, what are they doing? I mean, you know, we've we've moved assets around a little bit. You know, we've had, for example, events in the storefront where we've set up like a Grand Prix type booth and have people come in. That's oh, actually okay. that was very successful. People, people just like that interaction experience of not, yeah. you know, it's not just like filling out an online form and sending in a card. It's like, hey, look through my binder. Right. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Give me some offers. You oh, pay them I, at the end. And I've like, never sent in cards to sell. I need to have a, a vendor either. in front of me, yeah. right. putting them in piles, making the discussion. Kendra yeah. was a vendor, too. Yeah. yeah. yeah Kendra was starting to go to a whole bunch of shows, and then everything oh, just yeah. went... Ooh. 
Yeah. So when that starts up again, I mean, you know, we got a whole host of people ready to go, and you know, I mean, the first event that we can go to, it's going to be like debauchery. <laughs> they better, they better, it better be Vegas. It better be like three events, and we, yeah. it's just going to be crazy. It's just going to be Vegas, nuts yeah. and crazy. Vegas is a good one. They could, I mean. So any of the convention cities, Orlando, Vegas. Orlando would be sweet. Come on down, uh, y'all. Let's do this. Phoenix, <laughs> Nashville. <laughs> what are the other convention cities? Indianapolis. Indianapolis is a big Those one. Those would yeah. be fine. Nashville's great. That'd fine be fun. Um, oh, man. Easy to, so. Those are all easy to fly to. They've got the big spaces that'll be well aerated, you know. You can't aerated. You can't, yeah. Well, you can't you can't put this in. You can't have Lincoln, Nebraska. Sorry, Lincoln, but you can't have Lincoln, Nebraska be the first GP that comes down. Well, the problem with Chicago, Chicago has always had the issue of like par- parking. I think is a big Chicago, one. Like Boston, DC are all great convention cities, but they're super expensive and there's no parking. Yeah, typically yeah. when there's an Illinois event, it's usually in the outskirts or it's like in like yeah. Rosemont or yeah. it's never in like Chicago proper. Yeah, mm-hmm. they'll call it Chicago, but well, that's like it's in Boston. But it's really in Worcester. But it's in really Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. It's in Worcester. That's yeah. right. In Worcester. It's nearby in Worcester. Um. <laughs> it's like an hour to get to Worcester from. Boston. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can get there like three different ways, too. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the 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 idea that the organizers could like get away with calling Boston well, it's GP Boston, y'all. Yeah. Except it's forty five miles this way. All of it's this actually is to affordable. say that those people that were doing this are you know just like a lot of other jobs out there uh, Absolutely. have been have their had their livelihoods totally upended, as I'm sure many yeah. of you, well, and many of us have as well. We are not done with the good news mm-hmm. because yeah. bloody just last night had announced a GoFundMe to fund bottom surgery. And that happened, wham, was it even 24 hours? I don't think so. It was pretty quick. Yeah, so Bloody is a popular uh, streamer who happens to be trans, and Mm -hmm. um, she had made a video talking about the fact that her uh, gender dysphoria is quite strong and that she has had a very difficult time dealing with it um, to the point that she's in therapy, she's considered taking her own life, um, and she needs help because, you know, like um, everyday healthcare, um, trans healthcare is also a bit of a nightmare as well. Um, There are very few doctors that are willing to perform the surgery um, and so they can charge as much as they want to there's really long waiting lists and you know it's it's a feeling that not many people will ever have to go through you know the idea of, of, of having your body kind of turn against you and having to you know live with that every minute of every day and so it was just getting to be a bit too much for her and and it's extremely expensive even if you have you know good insurance or insurance may not cover it um, out of pocket you're still looking at 15 to 25 thousand and that's including there's a huge downtime with this as well um, but she was able to uh, uh, rally the community together, and they were able to completely fund her GoFundMe in uh, around 24 hours, which is quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. The the, the trans community in Magic: The Gathering is uh, large. It's a it's a, it's it's a higher percentage in Magic: The Gathering than in the general population. It feels like to me, and perhaps yeah. that's because I've been co-hosting a show for five years and uh, doing a D and D show, and one of my roommates is trans, and like at this point, I won't get involved in a project unless a trans <laughs> person is involved, because all of my best projects have always had that that. Voice. Well, I mean, and, and also for what it's worth, I mean, and Aaron this week, you know, Elliot Page right. showed up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's a really great thing to see because you know when I first started doing the deck tease like six years ago, it really did feel like it was just me. Like it was it was me content wise. Like there was I think there was one young lady who wrote for Star City. I think her name was Ashley. I'm not. I don't remember. But hmm. um, and then I met uh, Feline Longmore. Had her really big mm-hmm. weekend. And I remember the first time I met Emma, we spent hours just talking about life because I had never really met anybody right. like me before and then that was really the tipping point of like Emma and then there was Jade and then Jade had her big finish Jade and Comparins mm. and then it was Autumn Burkett and then it was like it just felt like I went from being the only one in the room to going to GPs and Opens and immediately just running into people and so it's been really great to watch that you know we really are in every aspect of the game whether it's judging whether it's vending whether it's um, design or even just working in wizard you know, you had Alexis Jansen and Allie Medwin, who's the head of Magic Online now. And um, just to see that we're, we're everywhere and we're thriving. And it, it's really good to see. 
And so, I mean, that's you know one of the great reasons I have you know the ability for us to be here every week, and right. so you can present your take on things, and oftentimes it's completely different, and that's great. So, <laughs> so as we, yeah. and before you know it, we're talking about '80s shows and large, handsome men. And it's fine. Right. It's called the pre-show. Exactly. That's why it oh exists. Uh, it's as fine. As we get further <clears throat> into this holiday season, as the days get shorter, and people start uh, either cutting back on their um, they're spending so that they can buy more gifts or they ramp up their gift giving uh, one of you know depending on uh, how financially stable you are after this crazy 2020 that we've had um, there are gonna be more uh, goFundmes and fundraisers and the like for people who are in trouble of losing their homes or need surgery or something um, and uh, as we as we round out 2020, it's good to see that our community does come together uh, mm-hmm. as a whole like this. Absolutely. Speaking of uh, uh, helping people out, uh, thank you for the subs, rabies. Uh, yeah. Gave over like a half dozen subs to people. Thank you yeah. so much. Rabies 78, thank you so much. Um, all right, That's so let's move on here. up on the overall list is rabies. <laughs> to gather the townsfolk. Now, uh, our first story here, we, like, the podcast is available in a bunch of different options. You can watch it on YouTube, or you can hear you know, the audio version. That's, you know, on, uh, well, technically it's on Libsyn, but then from there it goes into Apple, it goes into right. whatever your, uh, you know, podcast program might happen to be, and one of them, of course, is Spotify. And as you have seen, if you use Spotify today, uh, you got your 2020 wrap. And so for individual users like myself, it was like, hey, did you know that The Midnight was my most played band of the year? Oh, nice. So okay. I'm in there like, it was cool. I'm in like their 0.5% like top fans or something. And I was Synth like, wave. Oh, okay. oh, that's dope. That was, yeah, that was really cool. Um, you know, my most played song was Jason. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of cool okay. stuff in there uh, that you can find out for yourself. But for us, they had one for podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I'm bringing it up here on the screen so you guys can check it out. And again, <clears throat> small chunk of the audience is on Spotify, but hey. It's it's a slow news week, guys. What do you want yeah. from it? Well, um, we, I mean, it's a small chunk of the audience, but it's also quantifiable to see yeah. our stats, which is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we can see the stats here. He's got all the cool graphics on screen. For those nice. who are listening to the podcast, okay. I'll try my best to keep you going here. Nice. Um, they said, hey, while many of us stayed at home, your top episode really traveled. In fact, it never stood still. Ooh. Okay. And what was our top the, episode? Uh, this was the Walking Dread oh, okay. for October first, twenty twenty, and the first really, s- yeah, wow, the first, first seventy two hours. October. Listening peaked in the United Kingdom at one o'clock. What? Well, shout out to the PM? UK. Yeah, is that is that Amber see listening you. from six different? <laughs> We love you, Computers. Amber. In the United States, 12 p.m. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Makes sense. All right, on noon. Spotify, people I listen to us at work. Nice. I've heard that a lot. At the okay. same time, between October 1st, first thing in the morning, yeah. I'll get to crack wow. over. Yeah. You're starting your morning with us. That is incredible. Okay, that's good to know, I think. I'm just that's waking fun. up at that hour. It's played in 20 countries. All right, what? I'll take it. That's fun. Oh, wow. 20. So the episode was played in don't, 20 countries. Yeah. Man. Wow. Don't don't lose me here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Say hello to your new friends in Germany, where what? our listeners grew the most. Yep. Wow. Okay. That is wild. Is that 44% to, percent growth. Is that because you went to Essenspiel so many times? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> just, just left Guten my Abend, Essence. y'all. That's wow. right. So Welcome. that was pretty cool. Welcome to the cast. Canada. Okay. We were in cool. 39 countries around the world. What? That's crazy to me. Who so could that? That's over I mean, the year... Our podcast was listened to in 39 different countries. Uh-huh. That's pretty incredible. Wow. 84% On increase Spotify in followers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, this is just Spotify. Um, based on the stats that I have, we're in like 100 countries. Like, it's actually, wow. it's even further than that. Wow. Kind of that, and that's so China. funny, because like you think of like the usuals, like Canada, England, right. you know, whatever. And then I'm like, I know we s- have a few listeners in like the Philippines and Argentina and Germany. right. And I know I've, I've received a bus, I've received a DM from someone in Thailand, yeah. and then I, I know yeah. I've heard from someone in, in the Netherlands. But that's wild. Like if you would have told 16 year old me that like people in other countries know who I am or know who right. we are, I would have never We've believed got you. Like Korea what? in the chat, of course. Absolutely. What? Wow. We dropped 79 episodes, 5,000 minutes. That's great. Of Chitter Chat brought Jeez. to you. And counting. And counting. counting. We're, we're yeah. not done. There are multiple <laughs> weeks to go. 
It does crack me up how they give you the wrap stuff at the first of December. You're like, guys, right. there's a whole month left to go. Yeah, Why this in January. Wow, it's, thank it's you so much, everybody. Yeah, Vasun. I got to play a game with Vasun at Command Fest. Lee Vizorius as well. Lee Vizorius, Lee Vizorius knew what to do. He bribed me with his baby. Like we were trying to get a commander game going. He's like, I, I, I got a baby. Is that enough? And I'm like, ship it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you win. It's now, cool. Now for for our for my own personal edification, uh, Spotify represents about what percentage of our overall podcast audience do you know this is well, like eight percent well it's actually um and that again this is just the podcast this has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the video right. like Correct. a what we're watching today or b any of the stuff on youtube but uh, just the podcast around eight to nine percent of our listenership is on wow. spotify okay and so. that's so eight to nine percent of the podcast audience not counting mm-hmm. youtube not counting not live YouTube. twitch viewers correct is that big i mean mm. it's staggering to me that you wow. all put up with us Thank you. <laughs> we we love you and we yes, appreciate thank it. You. That's hey, so do you wild. Really get you want me to tell you something that might get me hated though? Oh I good, please. After don't all this have a Spotify account. Oh, you're that oh, guy who's I'm like too guy. cool for it. No, I my boyfriend I found out my boyfriend doesn't pay for the the ad free experience and I'm just like oh, okay. I'm glad that we don't need music to make love because that would be awkward if like, you know, you're trying to, you know, bump uglies and then there's an ad. Wow. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Sunday. And you're like, well, I'm, yeah. okay. <laughs> Be sure to check out ad free listening. It's like uh, not the time. Spotify. Like, baby, you couldn't drop the ten dollars, really. <laughs> like, I mean, and I get to pay for the family plan. Hashtag five kids. <laughs> um, and also on YouTube, let me tell you, I accidentally went into YouTube without having logged in. What kind of hellscape is that website it's without horrendous. a premium account? It yeah. is awful. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. So no. Twitch thanks. is getting just as bad now. Like all those blockers we used to use just don't work anymore. Yeah. Like that's why we started early tonight. We started. For those of you who are listening to to it uh, after it's been edited down, we started five minutes early just so that everybody could click through the ad that you can't skip past anymore. I feel mm-hmm. like they're all under attack now. Like we've noticed a significant uptick in our, our Twitch viewers, like people watching the video on demand because they can't deal with all the YouTube ads. And it's just like it just feels like everything's kind of you know you have Twitch where they're taking people down for like clips. Did you see that stupid tweet that Twitch posted? Like I guess there was a big Fortnite oh tournament or something happened this weekend. And even in Twitch itself was like if you guys are worried about strikes just go ahead and delete your stuff and it's like what this is this is your this is your tip the like are you game. serious like yeah it's bad um all right so let's move on here to uh some more good news ultimately and uh for seb mckinnon seb the master who's right right now the the secret layer is on sale if you want to get you a copy and you are able to financially do so without a huge detriment it probably would be a good idea to throw in the closet um, and then you come out of the closet later, Aaron. Can tell it's, got that, it's, got the, uh, it's right here. We can do that. It's, it's got the Evan Ir- well, my closet is also right behind. Me. Heyo. Um, it's got the Evan Irwin buy it and throw it in a closet for ten years stamp of approval. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, this is a a new version of Damnation that he did for the release. Sold for thirty thousand dollars. Worth every penny. Yeah, that's a high number. Um, yeah. And, but this is again, we've talked about it with Seb before. Is not every Magic the Gathering art feels like something that you can have hanging in your house. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and honestly, not every Seb McKinnon piece feels like you should have it hanging in your house. Mm. But things like this Damnation are enough, like a Hieronymus Bosch kind of piece that feels like it could be. A conversation piece. You can mm-hmm. have it hanging in, in in your hallway and be like, "Oh, that's you, these people are weird," but like it makes sense to have this hanging in your hallway. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, my goodness, they started five k and that was it just yeah. so much money in art collecting these days for it's magic. A, yeah. it's, Crazy. The, the original magic art market seems to have exploded this year specifically, which I find interesting. Oh, over the past year, two years, really, like it's done nothing but just like, I mean, even wow. the smallest crappy little commons going for four to five grand. I mean, that just didn't happen before, you know, the little, yeah. yeah, the little commons that go maybe five to seven hundred dollars or something, but not no more. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Ooh, yeah, they're congratulations. Put the Thrax Amundar on a t shirt? I might have to get the Thrax Amundar Ooh. on a t shirt. I don't know if there's Thrax. I know Damnation's on a shirt. I don't know. I've about seen the it, but like the way it looked, like it looked kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like when you upload like a right. picture to a yeah, template yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're just like slapping it on a shirt. It's not always that great. Like, you know, like they could do things like fade around the outside or do whatever, but when you just right. like copy and paste the picture on a shirt, it might not look great. Yeah. Just, just saying. Um, My boyfriend loves that shirt. Have I mentioned that? Like, just the damnation. Thing? Yeah, he thinks it's really great. I mean, cool. 
There's people who like the heavy metal <laughs> cards, secret layer. Yeah, that's sassy. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Something about strokes. All right. Mm. Um, well, <laughs> different strokes for different folks. You, you yes, can't that's just what let I was talking. Look, I can let it hang. I, I never, I never let it. Hang. You don't oh let it hang. God. You okay. can't let it go back Let's, and forth. Wait a minute. No, We're not please. in the pre-show. Okay. <laughs> It's a slow news week, okay? Um, congratulations to Jess Dunks at Dunkatog oh, yeah. for being the new rules manager yeah, started in January. Oh, yeah? That's great. Yeah, so he is in a power couple with uh, Nicolette Aprias, who is the head of the Judge Academy, I believe. And yeah. um, they're both just fantastic human beings, and they both work incredibly hard. They're both very, very driven. Um, and, you know, Je- just, Jess, sorry, um, has been a known face in the judge community for a while. And by all accounts, just very deserving guy and, and happy to see it. From yeah. one Jess to another. As oh, that's my right. First, that's your right. born name. My first name is Jesse. Jesse. And I have gone by Jess before. So, wow. so uh, this this is a hashtag Watsy staff position? Yeah. I think so. Is, so. Yeah. I'm pretty cool. sure this is Watsy official. This is what... Um, fun, fun. Uh, uh, who did it previously? Forgive me. This um, Tayback? Tayback. Thank you, Matt Tayback. Well, there was Tayback, that's but then there was Shifrin, wasn't it? Yeah. I think Tayback's still there. there. Tayback's still there. I think it went well, kind of the R&D. Well, they shifted jobs around. Right, which they do yeah. often. Okay. Uh, not crazy. Okay. Yeah, Tayback um, is doing like six different jobs, so this is replacing one of them. Now, I don't know about you, but I am incredibly happy to see Cardboard Crack back in action. Yeah. Yes. At Cardboard underscore Crack on Twitter, up and running. He has a brand new book, Quarantine, Quarantine Me I think with I My might Cardboard be getting Crack. A copy. Me too. Um, he slid in my DMs the other day and was like, Me hey, too, girl, yeah. can I get your address? And I was like, sure. Same. <laughs> Also, also did for me. Yeah. Um, also, also did for me. Too. I think okay. that one of my, if not my biggest thing that I did while working at Star City Games was uh, being the first to recruit Cardboard Crack for the news. Mm-hmm. First for the newsletter, and sure. then ultimately for like the website and and uh, sort of trying to help jumpstart that uh, uh, career, which has taken off on their own. Uh, no help needed. Took a long hiatus they did. Um, and is back apparently, and is doing hilarious new comics that are, and some of them are heartbreaking. <laughs> um, the the one with playing commander by yourself was upsetting to me. Did you see oh, the one where the guy's in bed and he just goes no no yeah. no and he's like super smiling? It says blue players sleeping or blue players dreaming or whatever. Yeah. So I, I've seen some takes on Twitter too. Like I think uh, Ali Warfield had said something and she was like, you know, I missed that ten second pause when you. You know, you think your opponent passed the turn and you just stare at each other. And then that led to other people just sort of chiming in with, like, their mundane magic interactions that they miss so much. (laughs) Always someone. Oh, man. All right. So that's awesome. Congratulations to them on the new book. And go check it out if you want. Um, Let's see here. It's time to move into Desperate Ravings. Oh, boy. Command Fest. Aaron. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so Command Fest was last weekend. Um, so for those, I, I just have to start off with this. So for those who are new to Spell Table or who are coming to Spell Table after the 18th, um, Spell Table was recently acquired by Wizards of the Coast, and they have made it so that you need to have a Wizards account to be able to use it. The problem is that the Wizards account they need you to have is not the Wizards account you used to have. So I had an account from 2018. That apparently was the account for competitive play, it's not the same account. So I tried logging into Spell Table, and I didn't remember my wizard's password. And so I hit the you know password reset email, and the emails didn't come. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like I'm requesting multiple emails. I open a ticket to Wizards. Wizards does not have any answer for me. Like they don't respond to my ticket in time. So in sheer desperation, I DM Spell Table at like 10 p.m. on Friday night, and I'm like, look, I've done everything. I've tried everything. I need to be able to get in here to play. Can you help me? And they're like, did you know that there's two accounts? And I'm like, no. And they're like, yeah. So the account you used to have is not the new one, and you need a new one. So all you need to do is just register. And literally, it was that simple. So if you're like me and had an account from 2016, 2018, whatever, and you find that it's not working in Spell Table, they're not the same, and you just need to register for a new one. Um, Um, Once I got that done, I had a lovely time. I played Commander all weekend. I played with a couple people in the chat. Everybody was super lovely, and I had a really good time, but that was just such a bummer, where like I spent most of the week just fretting over this of like I need to get in here and I can't do it and I didn't know there were two accounts did anybody else know that they, they kind of sort of dropped it I mean 
the spell table thing was like it went from what you could argue was like a tech demo to like I I sponsored them. I had cool stuff sponsored them. Right. And then like literally like the next week, Wizards is like, yo, dog, I'm just we're just going to buy you. And that's just kind of what happened. So it went from like one thing to another. So uh, so quickly, I can definitely see them rushing to put the Wizards account thing in there. Um, But, you know, ultimately, if that's the worst of it, we register again. Yeah. Yeah, so just it, it was just it was so simple. And I wasn't the only one in that boat. There were several people even in the in the replies because I was keeping track of this on Twitter, and they were like, "We don't know what happened either." And so it was nice to just get some information. So shout out to Spell Table for being very accommodating as I just randomly slid in their DMs and then um, you know sharing that information once we knew what the problem was. Nice. You know, uh, several weeks ago, when I'm trying to bring this up on the screen here for you, uh, several weeks ago, there was concern <clears throat> about Commander Legends because it had what you could argue is one of the best popper cards of all time. Right. What else would you want but to be to, keep, but to be the monarch for three mana on a fall from favor? In a con- <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's a common. Um, <laughs> so fall from favor. You can't really see it here, but it's a three mana enchantment enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, you tap enchanted creature and you become the monarch and the enchanted creature doesn't untap during its untap phase. So, yeah, the format's kind of busted and it's just fall from favor dot format. Yeah. And it just makes me want to not play popper. So it's, it's rare that Kendra ever steers me away from popper. Like she had posted, I think it was like a, a rock list or even an app. And list, and I was like, I would play this, and she was like, Great, but like, don't do it now. The format sucks, and I'm just like, uh, what? <laughs> this... And I've just seen screenshot after screenshot of just various ways in which this card is dominating, and you know, it's brought up a lot of discussion about whether or not Monarch is appropriate for a one v one setting, and yeah. it's funny because you do see it in Legacy to some extent, like Death and Taxes oh, yeah. has Palace Jailer, and yeah. um, you know, I know that some people are testing the courts in Legacy, but I, I, I feel like in Legacy we don't have a problem with it, but. But for whatever reason, it just seems to really skew Popper in a really ugly direction. Yeah. I mean, I would not I would not be completely shocked to see this in Legacy. Like, for this to lock down their Delver and oh. you become the Monarch. Like, maybe it's in the sideboard. You still pitch it to Force of Will, blah, blah, blah. But, like, being the Monarch in 1v1 is just... It's stupid. A blowout. It's, it's, it's crazy. There's also... it's all, So it's a three-man away to become the Monarch in Pauper, which there isn't another way to do. I mean, we've right. already it's all had... It's four. We've already had Thorn of the, of the Black Rose and Palace Sentinels. Right. Um, in in black and white decks, respectively, being used to get the Monarch, which was fair and fine and seemed balanced. Now right. you put it in blue, which was already uh, quite a dominant force in the format, and you put it on a three-mana card that also protects you from getting hit. This was a problem that they that everyone must have seen from a mile away. It, it um, was. It was just the, you know, the question was, you know, do they make this common because it makes the set better, it makes the draft play better, or do they make it un- common because they understand it's going to ruin Popper. Uh, to which my, my uh, you know comment at the time was, it's okay if Popper sucks for a minute, we'll ban it, we'll move on. But if that product doesn't work, right. and it was because of something small like this, it, you always make the product work. It's okay, the format can be fixed, the format can change, the format, like this is a $4 common on Magic Online right now. <laughs> that's like, just get that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So pay your four tickets oh, while sorry. you can, uh, and win those events that people don't want to play in, so Uh, All right, moving on here. There was a little bit of controversy. Someone had mentioned in a Discord. I have a screenshot of a Discord. That's all I got to go on here. That's how slow of a news week this is, y'all. We're searching for screenshots. I mean, it's true. But I also want to note that this is not like the end-all, be-all, well-vetted information, but this is what we have. Take it for what you want. Someone said the thing they just noticed with that Judge Academy, the Judge Academy we brought up earlier, is asking for fluent judges to assist with English to Japanese translations and are paying $100 per script for 2,000 to 3,000 word scripts. The American Translators Association recommended in 2017 a minimum translation rate of 12 cents a word, which would put those translation efforts at the value of $240 to $360. So, Ruben, you being the VO business... Right. What's well, what's and also here? copy editing. This is and more. Editing, this sure. is more using my editorial experience. Um, okay. I will say that that does. See, I mean, again, I don't know the rates for translators. 
Mm-hmm. 10 cents a word, 15 cents a word, that's a good rate for editing. Well, plus, um, you know, English to Japanese is not the but easiest the thing But the translation, in the world. I assume, is it should be higher. Right. Um, I, I, I'm, and also, this is not vetted information, and also, Judge Academy is not, you know, the New York Times. You know what right. I mean? It's like, not Wizards of the Coast, a subsidiary of Hasbro. Yeah, they're not. So, <clears throat> most of Judge Academy is volunteers to begin with. I don't think there's anything chicanerous happening here. No, like, I don't. Right. I assume, what I assume this is, is ignorance instead of malice, or just bad information. Um, and also, could just, just as well have been volunteer. Like, hey, can someone volunteer? Here for the can somebody help with this? We'll pay you, yeah, not a lot, right. but we'll pay you. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't see anybody getting rich essentially off Judge no, Academy no. at this point. And um, this to me feels like they probably just lowballed it a little bit, and they shouldn't okay. have gone that low. Hey, whatever, man. Mainly Look. because you know if you're going to translate probably maybe English to Spanish, I could see a rate that's much lower. But if you're going from English to Japanese, and they don't kind of put that in context, I could also see that being the case. I mean, I just, I, you know, this is a news topic that we wouldn't typically cover. <laughs> we typically I, I would be like, like eh, whatever. I feel like there's nothing here. I feel there's, like yeah. this is fine. It's it's a, a fairly effort, nothing burn. A, yeah. A, a for part of the show. Moving <laughs> on. It looks as though, per the preliminary events change for the 2021 yeah. mock season, that they've made them smaller slash easier to play in. Okay. Yes, Aaron? I'm a big fan of this. So I tend to play Magic Online more than anything. I'm about nine qualifier points short from this weekend showcase. It's probably not going to happen, but I've had a pretty good season, and it looks like next season will be even easier. So um, the qualifier events are one of the events that you can choose to play in, and they tend to happen every day, different times of the day, um, and they cost about 25 to 30 dollars to enter or you can break that down into tickets or points Um, and then I think right now there are five rounds you need 16 people to enter and I think you have to go four and one to even like get any QPs like you can go three and two and get points but you don't get the QPs what you're really after Um, this change starting next season there are only going to be four rounds Um, you need only 12 people to fire um, and you can go two and two and still get 10 qualifier points which is ridiculous and so if if you only need 40 to play in a showcase, this is a great way to get there. So mm. I'm really excited about this. And while I feel a little bit bad, I may not qualify for this weekend. This certainly makes me excited for the future. Very nice. Well, I mean, I'm making the bar a little bit lower and, yeah. you know, good price. The support, prize is yeah. a little bit flat. I'll mm-hmm. take it. Good, yeah. better. Seems like better prize support, flatter mm-hmm. scheduling, mm-hmm. Uh, easier to get things to fire. Um, hopefully they stick with this system for a minute if it works, mm-hmm. because I feel like Every other show, we're talking about qualifiers getting changed for MTGO. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it shows that they're listening to feedback. You know, I'd, I'd be more worried if they okay. were like de evolving or if like that's if fair. they were constantly changing and like going backwards. But I mean, it does. It, I do feel like in the last you know, year or so, they've made even more of an effort to like give people what they want. And so I will take that. Like, I, I think that's Great. fine. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I w- there's no report more that I would like to see than how much was Magic Online making on average before Magic Arena you know showed up and how much is yeah. it making these days? Those would be what good was numbers. the right what was the average concurrent user base before Arena and after Arena? And mm-hmm. how do those charts vary? Because my my concern over the years was always that Arena is going to just reach an end of life portion, whatever yeah. that ends up being. Right. But if the ecosystem is so strong, you know, that the it doesn't matter like you know like there's such an economy built in that game mm-hmm. they can't necessarily take it away not well, and there's also off experiences God that you people. can only get there you know I think you, correct me if I'm wrong but you can only play the vintage cube on Magic Online right correct right. Like, yeah. right. and then you have Legacy you have vintage the Commander mm-hmm. Legends yeah. like you couldn't Commander do that on all. Arena yeah Commander period yeah. is not and on so Arena and so that was the thing you had to do there and then <clears> you know you have Modern I mean granted you can't do Historic on, on Magic Online so there is a bit of an inverse but I do think there is enough there to keep Magic Online going and until they show I, I mean they're doing a good job of putting some older cards on arena but until you give us like proper modern it, at least it's probably not going to happen yeah i mean they're trying but you know just the other day i crafted my four wrath of gods so <laughs> yeah <laughs> we Great. did it Perfect. I'll, Yay. I'll, I'll have them just, forever just in the nick of time <laughs> oh man being able to play to fairy hero dominari again <sighs> that card <sighs> that card is not fair it's not even close Jeez. Gross. all right 
Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Another, here's a random thing we can talk about this week. Ethan Fleischer, one of the uh, Watsy R&D guys, Love one of the him. designers. Yeah, he's fantastic. He went through um, uh, and kind of did a random card of the day thing. He's still doing kinda, one. Yeah, it's an ongoing yeah. thread. Yeah, and every day he does one of those. And it was funny that on day 45... He came up with Yavamaya Dryad. This is the Time Spiral Uncommon. Yeah, for those, this was a cool fact. <clears throat> yeah, for those who don't know, it's two green and generic mana for a 2-1 Uncommon Dryad. Uh, it has Forest Walk. Remember when had, people had yep. Forest Walk? <laughs> Regis had Forest Walk? When Yavamaya Dryad comes into play or enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a forest card and put it into play tapped under target player's control. If you do, shelf your library. Target player's control, meaning you can give it to your opponent to have an unblockable 2-1. <laughs> I, I mean, that was that. That's <clears throat> right. That's that why was that. it was. T- uh, and also two had a giant, but okay. yeah, but that was like, that was the sick, like, Ooh, the tech was giving them the force. Right. right? Le- I mean, uh, super late game. You've each got 10 lands in play. You'll give it to your opponent it, earlier. Like turn three, you'll take the ramp. Right. And for those who don't know, for, for those illustrating the cards, they give them a style guide for right. whatever plane they happen to be on this. Hey, this is what it looks like. This is what the characters look like. This is what they dress in. This is what the weather is and all this other stuff. And they said, look, Dominaria at this point was to be a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Time spirals where everything sucks on Dominaria. Like, it's just, it's terrible. And they said, no leaves, zero leaves should appear in any art. But Rebecca Gay just couldn't help herself. <laughs> yeah. So y'all have my dry ass. And they, <laughs> she's Rebecca Gay. And yeah. she was Rebecca like, Gay. yeah, I know that's what you want, but this is yeah. what but, I'm going to do. But also, it's a dryad. It has forest walk. I'm giving you leaves. There's some um, really neat facts in this thread, though. So if you want to know more about cards like Solemn Simulacrum, uh, Cedar Jabari, um, this is a really great thread. And Evan's, Evan, Ethan's just a good human being. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's nothing I like more than reading how the sausage is made yeah. when it comes to magic cards. Right. They, they feel like, if anything, over the years, as I've you know seen this literally evolve, Wizard has gone more. Wizard has gone more and more from you know, don't tell them anything, don't even tell them like what the mechanics might have been or what the mechanics might have even hinted yeah. at. To like two videos in a row now, Gavin yeah. Verhey's like, here's two mechanics here's we didn't play use. Play test cards, yeah. Here's play test cards and mechanics we didn't use. Whatever. I think aren't Ethan's they, aren't also responsible for containment. And priest too. <laughs> I made a tweet I mean, one day where I was like, anybody responsible for containment priest like deserves a lifetime of like warm jello. And Ethan was like, it's a collective it. effort, right? But it's 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 great to see wizards just being sort of very open about yeah. it. like you know it like yeah you could keep that secret, but it's kind of cooler just to talk to us about it. Everybody kind of gets. But then there's the cards they don't talk about. Like, I want to know more about Oko and Hogak, and, like, how did you think those cards were okay? Uh, Well, I mean... They've been pretty tight-lipped about those. I mean, you know, talk about... But our mechanics we didn't use or take in responsibility for ridiculous design mistakes. Right. That's true. Get more They're on YouTube very clever every day. about what they'll be transparent about. They'll tell you what Cedar Jabari was. Remember right. that card? But they'll yeah. never tell you how Oro went wrong. Like, well, and let me tell you another secret. They can't use you know these. There was only a lot of expensive cards in this upcoming set, but there's going to be a lot of exciting cards. Right. That's that's the key word. That typically exciting. means expensive, doesn't it? It means yeah. expensive. Yeah. They're like, yeah, there's some exciting <laughs> cards at Mythic. Yeah, that means they're hundred dollar bills. Oh, that's no. what it means. All right. Uh, there was a fun thread on Reddit. I guess fun in many ways, but there was an interesting thread on Reddit about how magic products use too much packaging. Yeah. There is a there's a lot of packaging going on. There is a lot. With, for commander decks, uh, in particular, or, or even some other stuff. I mean, you know, the secret layer fetch lands with the giant chunk of foam and is like oh, this yeah. big for no good reason. Like, the, you don't have like oh, the VIP edition packs, for example. Like those things have a ton of air in them. Yeah, they don't need to yeah. be that large. Oh, There's a change.org position posi- petition reduce wasteful packaging in MTG products. This is bananas. I mean, sure. Well, I mean, to, to be fair, Hasbro did announce plans to phase out plastic packaging for all of its toys by 2022. Wow. Sure. I don't know if that change has uh, has been impacted by uh, the pandemic or if that any of that has been put into effect as of yet. Well, uh, or if that did, applied to Wizards at all, for that uh, matter. That's true. Uh, I think we did talk about it on the show when they announced it. It but, sounds familiar, yes. But the, I, but again, I don't know where they are in that uh, uh, sort of changeover. That said, there is a ton of packaging yeah. that are, especially in these secret layers and these commander decks, 
They're just not necessary. Just I, we get it. I mean, I, I too. I mean, you know, I'm a marketer, y'all. I get. I love how you want to showcase and you know show yeah. the cards off. But there's also very clever ways. Right. I think that you could do it with a lot less packaging. But um, Evan, without that much packaging, wouldn't my foils become damaged more easily? Oh, let's talk about that. Curled <laughs> cards are still a thing. Yeah. And I, look, I've, I've even seen people going like, you know, Commander Legends is different. Foils are totally well, different. Well, I've heard and the, the etched foils, and, and the I, etched I have foils a couple, are good. Yeah, I have a I couple hear. boxes around here, and my etched foils are not have not do, do not seem to be affected. But okay, but your regular foils seem to be affected. It, it's once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. Oh yeah. goodness gracious! Well, look, there's you know the humidity in the air is always a culprit. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like everywhere. Yeah, but like, you know, and I can't help but think, you know, many, many years ago, those foils didn't have these types of problems. I know. I just don't buy so it. What? I don't buy anything foil if I can possibly help it. Like, just if yeah. it comes with something, that's unfortunate, but I will never, ever, and, until this gets fixed, I won't do it. it look, I, all I'm known is that, you know, for the secret layers that are out there right now, my plan would be to get the non foil mm-hmm. bundle. Throw in the closet. That's where it goes. If you we'll can afford it, it. If you right. can afford it and it does not impact you in any other way. Yeah. But that would be my suggestion because those cards are going to be non-foil. AK, you're not going to have that problem whether yeah. you want to open it or the person who wants to open it buys it. All that stuff. Um, so, yeah. The the idea that the foils have been fixed. No. Mm, maybe the edged foils, though. Those seem really sweet. People, people seem to like yeah. that a lot. I still need... Uh, can I get an edge foil of my turtle? Of my turtle boy? Uh, you and that freaking turtle. I want that turtle, man. I don't think so. The edge foils the were a unique list of, of stuff. The turtle. He's, yeah, the boy's got a shell. The boy right. has a shell. That's right. Look, uh, there was a fun article here on ICV2.com. If you ever heard of ICV2, oh, this no. is the this is for the hobby industry, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. The this article, so, I read this article and was like, this feels like something we should talk about, but also like who, a case who is for this the person and what is this sale website? Of Wizards of the Coast being on the horizon. Oh my goodness! It Hasbro don't. never really wanted to deal with Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Starting Hasbro strong. doesn't like all this money <laughs> that they keep yammering about every quarterly report we ever see. Like their CEO mentioned it specifically on CNBC. Mm. Like, you know, th- these aren't random things. And, yeah. there are, and there's some form of thing and say, hey, they're, you know, they, they say that stuff because they want it to seem very, you know, good and they want you know to get yeah. the buyer on on board. And the other half of the article is like, who's going to buy it? Exactly. Who could possibly That's afford the big it? Thing is like, who would if they, if they want it to sell it which they right. don't first of who all who would they w- sell it to <laughs> right <laughs> microsoft <laughs> like what yeah. i don't know <laughs> who's big enough to buy this stuff you know? i mean like, to be fair if if i was looking for a buyer for death row records i would not have picked hasbro <laughs> so like maybe you know i don't know Apple I'm telling you, I'm, Magic I'm ready the for, Gathering. for the Tupac cards. I mean, let's, yeah. let's go. Just come on. Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, a subsidiary of Amazon. Oh, jeez. Who knows? Oh. Like, whatever. Yeah, there was the whole thing, because recently, <clears throat> and we've talked about this, is that Wizards has been doing really weird things in regards to contracts that are getting them in lawsuits. Yes. And we don't know why, and none of it makes any sense. So Gale Force 9 wants a million bucks because they stopped approving uh, D&D products. And yeah, which we talked about last week. And yeah. then the Dragonlance thing happened before that, where they which shut down approvals. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Right. And and here is this like, well, you know, the reason those are happening because Wizard, you know, our husband was trying to sell Wizards. <laughs> That's and I'm like, quite a leap. Bro, we, we yeah. This is where do, where do we go in the logic this chain? Is some I don't Pepe know where Sylvia, that happened. This is some Pepe Sylvia red string across the maps. Yeah, this is oh, kind of silly. I just thought yeah, it was silly. Not. Let's move on. Um, all right, so we have a couple minutes here. Uh, definitely want to talk about David Prose, who had a, who we lost this week, yeah. which was unfortunate. Um, awesome, you know, like he did such a good job in Darth Vader. Um, uh, James Earl Jones had said that he didn't want credit in the actual original movie because right. David had played him so well. The physicality the that David Prose had as the right. man inside of the Darth Vader suit and mask was right. iconic in a way that you don't. see see and you hadn't seen since the silent movie era um, and he was a part of that team that was on on the sets all the time and it was uh, you know it's another of these giants of the Star Wars saga passing away 
Yeah. I mean, the, the the intimidation factor, essentially, he was able to, to give just by the movements, how he moved, how quickly he moved, you know, yeah. and I mean, it was it was fantastic. So uh, so uh, he was great. Um, uh, interesting uh, story here from Uri Geller. Uri Geller had oh, a yeah. Pokemon card made from him or made about him or something. Yeah. Someone who knows Pokemon talked about this. Yeah, so Yuri Geller was a famous psychic, known for bending spoons. And he apparently had, like, sued them and said that he felt like Kadabra was using his image. And if I understood it correctly, you couldn't print Kadabra on the cards for, like, 20 years. Yeah, because Kadabra had a spoon. Right, and then just recently he posted, like, a tweet out of nowhere and was like, I was wrong, you can do it. But some people said he's he's, like, uh, opening a museum and that he might be doing it for press. It sounds really messy. I mean, anything to get the press, right? I guess. This guy's just a jerk. I mean, he's just a, he's just like a pompous, he's a TV psychic. Like, you can't, Uh, you can't, like, whatever, man. Well, he sued Nintendo in 2000 and asked that Kadabra no longer be put on Pokemon cards. The Pokemon company has honored the request all of these years, but he kept hearing about it. And he said... Kadabra was originally called Un Geller in Japan. That makes way more sense. Right, which is of very why close to Uri name. Geller would not be happy about it. Right, all those things. You know, it, it was clearly you know him essentially, or or meant to be an, a send up to him. So, but that has you know he's given him permission now. That's great. I hope they make more sure. of those cards. Go nuts. Whatever, man. Pokemon's done nothing but explode this year. So yeah. that's that's fun. Yeah. If your job is TV psychic, I have no pity for you. Yeah. So let's move on here. Turn the corner to the finisher. Look, this week, everyone's been sharing their streamed music and audio stats, and we thought we might do the same, which we did. All told, we were downloaded 216,016 times as of this recording just in 2020. Wow. Thank you so much for making us a part of your listening schedules. But I'm curious, besides Magic Mike's, who's on your most listened to list of 2020, Aaron? Oh, man. Well, this year I've been listening to a lot of art house and folk pop and Electra Swing. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm listening to the same three artists I've been into since middle school. She's Britney, bitch. <laughs> we got a new song tonight on her birthday, and there's another oh, wow. one coming out on Friday with the Backstreet. It's a, it's a Backstreet Boys duet. Like I'm, oh, I can't. my God. Is it 1998? Amazing. Britney and Ruben? the Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. Those of you who know me know I don't really listen to music. I don't even have a Spotify or a Pandora account. So what's on top of my playlist for the year? Corpse Husband. <laughs> I'm not really listening to his music, though, because I'm just watching his Among Us clips nonstop. Very nice, very nice. Well, look, I love music. Even before I was a magic content creator, I was a musician. Yes, I've been paid money to play songs for people. So what's been making me tap my toes in the terrible 2020? Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm savage, classy, bougie, <laughs> ratchet. Yep. Perfect. Oh my God. I've had Don't Stop on repeat for weeks. Like that young thug verse just takes me out every single time. It's so good. That's great. And that ends another live episode of Magic Mike. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. So move here to our final slide. Let's see if I can find it here. Very nice. Uh, I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching or listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow that tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, or Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.